Hello there, today I want to show you a stealth heavy aspect of my personal build I run the game with. First let me show you my gameplay in general and then I reveal my perks. As well check the description of the first comment where you can find a link to everything I got here. The first tactic is 100% sneak mode and since I run with a non-explosive flamer I need to be close to these mini hulks and fire them up. Unyielding armor plus everything related to be more sneaky make it a very easy task and stealth attacks make my cooking even faster. Basically he has nothing to challenge me and there is no need of high damage resistance, crazy AP refresh or other legendary effects. Save for one, uh, become harder to detect while sneaking I guess. The easiest gameplay ever, since daily ops showed up you can farm fuel like crazy and for one mini hulk I spent here only free fuel. But keep in mind that for daily ops it's better to go with power armor, because you can't sneak on them, though they die with the same speed. Speaking of buffs, you need only to boost your agility to be more sneaky and that is all. About using flamer as your primary weapon, I can tell that they break fast, of course not that crazy crazy fast like their legacy brothers, but definitely faster than miniguns. Let's say I can do 3 daily ops before it breaks from 200% condition. So you got the picture. Though from other point of view I've never used a minigun in daily ops, but if you do, you will know. Being sneaky sneaky is good and will help you a lot, but getting yourself in danger could happen as well, due to serial luck or tactic number 2 I will show you right now. Your sneaking status from danger to caution and then to hidden can change pretty fast when you run a stealth build. If after attacking them you step away and the enemies don't change their direction towards you or still shooting at the same direction as before it means they lost you and you can attack them once again, but always try to approach them from the side. First they attacked me directly and now not. You see? Now let's hunt a scorch beast and have some fun in realistic mode afterwards, where all notifications are invisible and you can figure your sneaking status only upon their behavior. Of course you have to wait until the scorch beast lands and it's not a good option for the queen runs on public servers. But if you got her landed you can secure some loot just in a few seconds on firing her head up. The problem is that she can fly for a few minutes before she decides to land, so sometimes it's better to engage her with a couple of bullets. But whenever she lands, just ciao mamita. So yes, you don't actually need to be in the sneak mode all the time. You can run towards your target, enter in sneak mode, kill your target with a sneak attack and then just disappear for other mobs because they are not close enough to percept you. And you can do it endlessly, or just run away, enter into the sneak mode and fast travel to your camp or other places. Here robots fight scorch people and actually don't care about my presence. I am supposed here to run from one target to another, but somehow I cut a wrong piece of footage, but in general I run more than sneak. Or I just fly in sneak mode, but I will show you that just in a few seconds. Watch out by the way, some mobs don't give you a chance to sneak on them. Mole reds and the red scorps and the red dots as well have the same perception as daily ops mobs. And now it's time to fly. A Marlock Queen doesn't receive your fire damage if you try to cook her legs. I just died in realistic mode trying to kill her this way. Here I actually changed my main flamer to vampire one and with the side approach it's safer to kill her. By the way, with the scorched queen happened almost the same thing. You need to aim straight at her head trying to feed her with the fire. Flamers are very powered or slightly overpowered in general, so you don't need a bloated version to give them a hell. Vampire one would be a nice choice just for any type of troubles, especially if you play in realistic mode. By the way, here's how I understand what is happening with my health. As you know, whenever it drops below 20%, you hear something like a heartbeat. The second time it happens when your health drops below 10%, and maybe you need to heal yourself. 
here I'm about to get myself into the danger. And this guy drops my health below 10%. Let's check a peep boy. 10%. Though maybe I'm the only one who plays the game this way, but you should try as well if you want something challenging. And I would say that this build is the easiest way to be OP without legacies or god rolls weapons. Let me know what do you think about this style of gameplay, how do you play the game, what you struggle with and what is your current level, just to have a picture. Maybe I could cover up your specific problem since I started a new character. As well, it would be nice to get your support by subscribing, it would be awesome. And it's time for Perkled Out. With Endurance it is always situational, under Charisma you can choose between Friendly Fire to heal your allies if you do Radiation Rumble or Project Paradise, Strange in Numbers to boost your mutations or suppress them. So it's kinda situational as well. Under Agility you need everything for sneaking and the rest is optional, but use Dodgy if you will choose Tactic 2 when you are not always in sneak mode. With a Framer you definitely do not need max adrenaline, so depends on your playstyle. The rest is up to you, but your questions are welcome. By the way here I use Demolition Expert because my second weapon is explosive, it doesn't work with Flamers. Here's my Flamer and everything else. Buffs I use to run more and fly more. Mutations, oof, this one by accident are here. Well, thank you for watching. If you are still here, definitely consider to subscribe, and I'll see you later.